So David Enrich here at the table. Uh, you've seen a lot. You've studied a lot. You've written a lot about Trump's finances. What do you make of this lawsuit yesterday? How big a deal is it? I mean, it's a big deal. It's the first time we've seen in black and white really serious allegations that the president, or the former president, systematically overstated the value of his assets. And that is a, it's a damaging allegation. Is there anything in here that surprises you, having studied his book so closely? You know, it surprises me a little bit that just how directly involved he allegedly was. I mean, one of the kind of Trump's master strokes over the decades has been that he has maintained plausible deniability, whether by just not using email or just having layers of intermediaries between him and whoever he's operating with. It allows him to kind of wriggle out of things. But if you look at this lawsuit, the allegations are very clear that Trump not only had knowledge of what was happening, but was personally involved with or directing a lot of these activities. And as you know, a lot of this isn't particularly recent developments. This is like a long history of this. So why has it all come to the surface now? Well, it, because there's been, you know, there's critical mass behind these investigations now, it seems like. And I think, I mean, from, from the Trump's standpoint, that is what I think is so concerning. It's not just this Tish James lawsuit yesterday. There are criminal investigations on the federal and state level elsewhere, and there's a whole swirl of this stuff right now. And I think it's probably the greatest legal peril that Trump has ever found himself in. So, Dave Arenberg, certainly a big deal, but we've been cautioned by other attorneys. This could take quite some time. There's a backlog in New York courts. It could be years before this thing comes to fruition. But also in what the Attorney General Letitia James said yesterday, a criminal referral. Talk to us about how potent that is and whether you think the IRS and others might pick it up. Yeah, Jonathan, it, it is serious because the criminal referral could lead to charges by the feds. And don't sleep on this, the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg. He has said in a press release that his investigation of these same matters continues. And here they had a division of labor. Tish James, the attorney general, investigated this on a civil basis because she's limited on what she, she could do on a criminal basis. And Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA, was investigating this on a criminal basis. And remember, Alan Weisselberg is going to be sentenced to five months in prison for his role in a similar financial scheme. And so, yeah, that could be the future for others involved with the Trump organization. Um, you know, what's important to know here is that even though this is a civil matter, it is still, as David said, a big deal. Remember, Letitia James, the attorney general of New York, is the one who successfully uh, went after the Trump Foundation, the charitable arm of the Trump Organization, and led to its dissolution. And and so, yeah, there are a lot of bad things that can happen here, short of putting the Trump family in handcuffs. So, David Enrich, uh, great greatest legal peril that he's ever faced. That's what you just said. Uh, my question to you is a basic one: Where's he going to get the lawyers now? That is a good question, uh, and this is a topic I explore in my book, and the lawyers had been kind of tiptoeing toward him for a while, and now they're running away from him as fast as he can. So he has had a lot of trouble finding lawyers that are not only willing to deal with kind of the reputational taint, potentially, that comes from uh, dealing with Trump, but also the fact that his lawyers over and over again over the years, including right now, have themselves faced, found themselves in legal peril because of what Trump requests of them and asks them to do. And, you know, as any lawyer will tell you, the last thing in the world you ever want to do is find yourself, not just your client, looking, being in the crosshairs of prosecutors. And I think that is, it's a really good open question where he is going to be able to find the legal resources to deal with this. Because there's, Jones Day is his longtime, law, his campaign's longtime law firm. I think it's very unlikely that they are going to jump back on this bandwagon right now. And frankly, I'm not sure who else might. So, David, we've already covered enough legal peril for one show, but that's not enough for Donald Trump. As also the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against him last night, pretty significant setback uh, to Trump appointees, we should note, uh, part of that decision. Um, and now allowing the, the DOJ can, once again, start looking at these classified documents, getting rid of the delay. DOJ, of course, had registered a real complaint about that. Give us your assessment. Was this the right decision? And what does it mean going forward for the case? It was the right decision. This was a smackdown. That's a technical legal term. Uh, in the so. world of pro wrestling, yeah, this would be considered a one-sided squash match. Uh, but it didn't have to happen because the Department of Justice gave Judge Cannon an off-ramp, saying that just let us review these 100 classified documents and we won't appeal. And the DOJ agreed to accept the special master for the rest of the materials. But Judge Cannon was locked in with Trump's argument that no, 
none of this stuff should be reviewed. And she was rebuked by the conservative 11th Circuit. And you're right, two out of the three members of that panel were appointed by Donald Trump. The 11th Circuit said that contrary to Judge Cannon's ruling, the documents were indeed classified and that Trump's lawyers provided zero evidence to the contrary. And it wouldn't matter anyway, because a former president has no possessory interest in such government documents, whether they're classified or not. So this was an easy call as a matter of law, and this reversal will be a permanent part of Judge Cannon's legacy. And unfortunately, it had to come to this. You know,